What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build a pair of simple trivets, one using my Inventables X-Carve and one using more traditional woodworking tools like a router table. It's kind of cool to build basically the same project in two very different ways, but they both turned out great and I think they both look pretty similar. Now, this build is part of the Inventables Easel Power Hour Challenge, which they are running right now. I'll have a little bit more detail on that later in the video, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the build. I built these trivets using a few scraps I had lying around, so the first step was to plane some of them down to get a smooth glue surface on both sides, and also to bring them to the same width. Next I glued the scraps together to form the blank, which was big enough for both trivets. The blank was about 7.5 inches wide by 16 inches long. After letting the glue dry overnight, I removed the clamps and scraped off the glue squeeze out with a cheap chisel. And I highly recommend keeping a set of inexpensive chisels around for this task as they make really quick work of removing dried glue. Once most of the glue was removed, I planed down the blank until both faces were nice and clean. And this is one of the most satisfying parts of any scrap wood build. Seeing all those rough pieces of scrap turn into something awesome looking, it's just so satisfying. Next, I cut the blank to final width at the table saw and then cut it into two seven and a half inch squares at the miter saw. The first trivet I made was the one using traditional woodworking tools, so next I needed to get my woodpecker's router table set up for cutting the slots. I installed a quarter inch upcut spiral bit and then set the height to roughly half the thickness of the trivet using one of these woodpecker's setup blocks. I set the distance between the fence and the bit to an inch and a quarter and then added some painter's tape to the fence so I could mark out my stop and start points. And this is where I wasn't precise enough and the slots on the finished trivet are a little bit off because of it. Anyway, after marking my stop and start points, I could get to routing. And this is a pretty simple process. I just aligned the edge of the trivet with the marked line and then slowly lowered the wood onto the bit. After routing the first groove, I rotated the piece 180 degrees and routed the groove on the other end. Then I flipped the board over and repeated the process on the back, making sure the grooves were perpendicular to the ones on the front. And I erred on the side of cutting the grooves too shallow at first, so after cutting the grooves on the back, I needed to raise the bit slightly so that the cut would go all the way through. With the first set of grooves done, I moved the fence back one inch and then repeated the process, making four grooves each time before moving the fence. While I route the rest of the grooves, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Woodpeckers. I used a bunch of Woodpeckers tools in this video, including their precision router lift and router table, setup blocks, 1281 square, and more. Woodpeckers tools and accessories are manufactured in the USA to the highest standards using state-of-the-art CNC equipment in their shop near Cleveland, Ohio. I've personally been using Woodpeckers tools for years, and they really helped me to be more precise and accurate in my woodworking. If you'd like to learn more about their products, check out the link in the video description below, and big thanks to Woodpeckers for sponsoring this week's video. After finishing the grooves, I marked a radius on the corners of the trivet and then rounded the corners using the oscillating belt sander. With that, the kind of standard woodworking tools version of the trivet was basically done, so I moved on to cutting one with the Inventables X-Carve. And first, I measured the exact final thickness of the trivet using a pair of digital calipers and entered that measurement into Easel, the software that comes with the X-Carve, and I also adjusted the depth of my slots to be just a little bit more than half of that total depth, again in Easel. With the software side ready to go, I got the trivet clamped to the wasteboard, making sure it was square to the surface. Once I clamped the board down, I took some scrap pieces of wood and nailed them to the wasteboard to create kind of a fixture so that I could flip the trivet over after the first operation and run the same operation again on the back of the trivet. While I set up the X-Carve, I also want to mention that this trivet build was part of the Inventables Easel Power Hour Challenge that they're having right now, and basically the challenge is to see what you can design that can be carved in under an hour. All you have to do to enter is come up with the design in Easel, which is Inventables free web-based software. And the grand prize winner will receive an X-Carve. That's a huge, huge prize. So to get entered, use the link in the video description to sign up for Easel and then learn more about how to enter on the Power Hour landing page, which I'll also link to below. Anyway, next I could get to carving and I think the carve time to cut these grooves was four minutes on each side. After the first operation was done, I sanded off the fuzz, flipped the trivet, rotated it 90 degrees and then clamped it down again. And when I started the operation on the back side of the trivet, 
I realized that I had screwed up when jogging the machine after the first operation. I accidentally jogged it forward instead of backward and it hit the limit switches and kind of got a little bit off. So this messed up the zero point, but I stopped the operation, re-zeroed everything, started it over and it worked fine. And this little bit of an errant cut is on the back of the trivet and you'll really never see it. Before cutting the outside shape of the trivet, I realized that the bit would cut right through the clamps, so I brad nailed the corners of the trivet to the wasteboard, making sure to put nails in areas that the bit wouldn't contact. With the cutting operations done, I moved over to the belt sander and cleaned up the edges, removing the tabs and any fuzzy bits left by the router bit. At that point, both trivets were at the same point in the process, so I continued working on both of them, first breaking all of the inside edges of the grooves with sandpaper, Next, I rounded over the outside edges using an eighth inch radius roundover bit at the router table. I like to slowly raise the bit just to make sure I don't go too far and end up with a little ridge left by the roundover bit on the faces of the piece. After rounding over the edges, I smoothed out the edges a little bit further with 120 grit sandpaper and then finished sanding the trivets with 180 grit sandpaper. For the finish, I applied a few coats of wipe on poly, which was kind of a pain with all those grooves, and I probably would use a spray finish if I had to do this again. Finally, I added a few rubber feet just to keep the trivets from sliding around and also to let heat escape through the bottom of the trivet, and then they were finished. All right, all right hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'm really happy with the way these little trivets came out. They're super simple, but really functional and great uses for those scrap wood pieces you've had hanging around the shop. These would make awesome gifts. I know Father's Day is coming up, so if you've got a dad who likes to cook, these would be perfect for that. I mean, who can't use another trivet? I know I can never find mine, and these look a lot better than the trivets I currently own. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I will have a link to the easel project for this trivet in the video description below in case you want to cut this exact same thing on your X-Carve. And again, this project was part of Inventable's Easel Power Hour Challenge, and I'm really excited to be part of it and see everybody's entries. I know this was really simple and quick, but I am sure there will be some much, much cooler projects out there. Definitely check out the links in the video description below to learn more about that challenge and how you can get entered. So thanks again for watching, everybody. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every week. Also, don't forget to ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos and live streams. I'll also have links to all the tools and materials I used in the video description below. And last, I've added this new YouTube sponsor feature to the channel. It basically allows you guys to support me monthly. It'll give you access to exclusive behind the scenes vlogs, exclusive live streams, discount codes on my website, and a whole lot more. So definitely go check that out in the video description or using the little sponsor button below this video. All right, thanks again for watching everybody. And until next time, happy building.